Professor Wingus Illich. Professor Illich received his doctorate from the University of Florida and earned a master's degree from Iowa State University. His research investigates the influence of dispositional organizational outcomes, such as leadership, motivation, and job attitude. He is well published. He is published in journals such as the Academy of Management Journal, the Journal of Applied Psychology, the Journal of Organizational Leadership Quarterly, and Organizational Behavior and Human Decision Process. Today he's going to share to us something we rarely hear about. How do individuals share the positive work events at home? And so I'm just very happy to have him, and I'm dying to hear about his insights. Okay, thank you. And he's also a part. <laughs> so you'll have him back at home in time for the game. I heard that the security is all alerted. Yeah, and I live in downtown, so you know, <laughs> i got to be careful. Okay, th thank you for the introduction, and uh, thanks everyone for coming here. Uh, today, and also thank the, I want to thank the Center for Positive Organizational Scholarship for inviting me. Um, it's, it's nice to be here. So this, <coughs> today's presentation, what I, what I want to talk about is employee well-being in a broad sense, and then I'm going to narrow it down to some of the research that I do. Uh, namely, I'm going to describe a, the study on work family interpersonal capitalization kind of a lot of words there, but what it means is whether you go home and you discuss something positive that happened to you at work uh, with your spouse or significant other. So my interest, as, as you will see, is in uh, whether this capitalization increases job satisfaction and uh, relationship, relationship satisfaction. Uh, Back, back to the broader well-being, you, you see here some, some definitional statements. Well-being uh, in general and employee well-being as well, uh, refer, it, it's this very broad and inclusive construct uh, that refers to uh, optimal functioning. And there are several distinctions between uh, hedonic and eudaimonic well-being, uh, evalu evaluative and experiential. What I'm concerned with mostly today, although I, I will mention some, some, some of the other research that I do, is evaluating, well, evaluative well-being. So how do we subjectively assess the quality of our lives or uh, in, in, a more, in, a, in a narrower sense, the quality of our jobs or of our marriages? So it's, it's an evaluation, a self-evaluation. Uh, noteworthy in this uh, dinner all definition is that those evaluative, uh, those evaluations of well-being can be done both at the moment, so how do I feel right now, or in the long term. Uh, and I, I'm interested in both aspects, although a large uh, proportion of my, my research, my current research program, deals with the moment and the daily evaluations and uh, predicting changes across time and with, within people. With respect to uh, long-term well-being, global judgments of life satisfaction, that is perhaps the, the broadest uh, subjective well-being evaluation. And uh, I, I, have, I have done some work with uh, Danny Heller and, and, and David Watson where we look at bottom-up models of life satisfaction whereby people's satisfactions with their life domains, like their job, their marriage, their health, uh, build up to form this global uh, subjective well-being, which is life satisfaction. Uh, the kind of the, the the model that is typically contrasted to this is is the uh, the top down, where our personalities, who we are, color everything that we evaluate, including our life our life satisfaction, and then down to our job satisfaction uh, and others. In in this paper that I that I'm describing the We've, we basically found a, a support for a, a mixed model. So uh, between individual differences in job, life, and marital satisfaction are combined in, in such a way that personality influences both the, the lower level satisfactions, which are job and marital, and the higher level life satisfaction. Yet uh, job and uh, marital satisfaction do have a causal effect uh, on, on life satisfaction. Uh, other research that I do, and this is kind of like a, just, just, just to give you a flavor of some, some things that I do in this area, 
on long-term employee well-being uh, that deals with between individual differences. Uh, I, I have done some research on the generic source of job satisfaction, uh, looking at whether personality mediates some of the genetic effects on job satisfaction. It, it turns out that to, to my surprise in, in two papers now, there is a very small amount of genetic variance that uh, personality in terms of like big five factors or uh, core self-evaluations uh, mediate. So nevertheless, I think this, this traditional research stream on well-being and job satisfaction that examines between individual differences has produced some uh, interesting findings and some, some valuable findings. Now what, what this approach cannot answer is what influences people's momentary or daily evaluations? If I ask something, how are you today? Uh, th there is a lot of, uh, uh, there are many factors that enter into that response, like someone's current mood, how my, how my health is today, how satisfied I'm with my job today. And this between individual approach cannot look at this uh, state well-being evaluations. And so therefore, by, by taking a between individual approach, one cannot address, cannot examine uh, the influence on discrete states, for example, uh, events at work, things that fluctuate, like workload fluctuates. Uh, some, on, on some days we have more to work than in others, and this, uh, these fluctuations influence uh, how one's satisfaction changes. So then, this, this gets me to the, 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 the need to to look at well-being states. So how are these well-being feelings, well-being evaluations change uh, over time? And one, one way to, uh, to look at well-being changes over time is to, you know, um, is to look at jobs, state job satisfaction. Given that this is the, as, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, Job satisfaction is the domain satisfaction that concerns work uh, that contributes to someone's uh, broader well-being. Uh, my, my purpose in, in this research that, that, I, that I show today and in, in, in a broader stream of research is to look at uh, job satisfaction defined as, a, as an evaluative state. Uh, and you, you see here a, 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 a little definition that focuses on the evaluative state. Uh, job satisfaction as an evaluative state. Uh, just, just to give a little bit of background on, on, on this uh, stream of research, this is, this is a paper that uh, I, I wrote with Tim Judge in, uh, in, in 2002. Uh, I, I, this was actually, you know, just to give a little story on the paper, I, uh, I was a graduate student in Judge's class, so this was like a class project that Tim found interesting enough and then we did, a, we did the study and we published the paper. Uh, so here for the, fir for, for the first time, for us at least, we, we looked at uh, job satisfaction as a state. So we asked people multiple times a day, uh, how do you feel about your job today? How do you like your job right now? Uh, so not how you generally feel about your job, which would address the between, which is a long-term evaluation that is typically studied at the between individual uh, level. And we find out if this, uh, if you add those percentages, this is the uh, kind of a pie that looks at the total variance in job satisfaction scores. Uh, it turns out that uh, th about 36% of this variance is at the within individual level. And the, se the second uh, graph only shows the within individual variance and it partitions it, it's explained by, in this paper by uh, momentary mood, 29%, and then the lagged uh, job satisfaction, 12%. Uh, so he, here in, in this study, we, we observed that indeed there are meaningful variations in, uh, in, in job satisfaction that can be predicted uh, with mood in, in, in this study. Now, state job satisfaction has to be related to the trait-like job satisfaction measures that we're, we're typically used with, so with the long-term evaluations. Uh, in, in, in this paper, 
uh, we looked at the, the, how, how they correlate, how, how does the general global job satisfaction score that the one reports correlates with an average formed by state evaluations. So here is like the, the for example, they correlate 0 0.40 with when you have one state evaluation. This is across people. If you average two state evaluations, that, that goes up to 0.45 and, and so on. And you, you can see that past 10 or 11, when, when these composite scores uh, has 10, 11 or more state evaluations, it, it, it pretty much stabilizes and it correlates, it has a validity of uh, about 0.6 uh, relating to global job satisfaction. So then, just like a, a, a little summary so far, uh, I, I believe that daily job satisfaction, which, which is typically assessed, I assess it at least, uh, most times at the end of the workday, uh, though not, not always, as you will see in a, in a few minutes, uh, represents this summary evaluation of what happened uh, on, on that day at work. And again, why, 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 why do I care about uh, daily satisfaction and, and, and trans, uh, other transient well-being um, indicators. I believe I can capture the influence of like transient work events, fluctuating factors at work, and uh, discrete events. So what, what, what are some influences on state job satisfaction that I, uh, and I, I, I'm trying here to, to put mostly the positive things that I studied. Uh, at the end, you know, it, it, it didn't work out. <laughs> but uh, mood at work, we found in, in this paper that, that, I, uh, that I described earlier. Uh, so within people, uh, mood, at, mood at work pr uh, predicts job satisfaction. Uh, per perhaps not that surprising. Uh, when, when we are in a better mood at work and somebody asks us how, how do we like our job, uh, we, we say that we like it better. Positive work events and experiences, uh, this is the study that I'm going to present in more detail in, in a couple of minutes. Uh, interpersonal justice, flow at work. I, I mentioned earlier that I'm, I'm concerned mostly with evaluative subjective well-being uh, states in, 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 this, in, in this presentation. Uh, that's not true for this study. This is a study with, a, with, a, with some students of mine where we look at flow at work and uh, we assess it by uh, with, with, with a method that does not ask people to evaluate whether they were in flow or not. And we, we, we have some interesting results. Uh, social interactions, uh, I, I looked at in, in, in this data that I'll that I present in a minute, uh, at, at, at the end of the, I, I, somebody coded the events that people reported and a lot of them concerned social interactions. So then I, I went back to some old data set that I had where I, where I was asking people each day uh, to rate the final report of the day on, the, on some kind of state RIASEC. Uh, it, it happened that the extent to which an event is social uh, has a larger influence on, on job satisfaction uh, than any other di dimension. Uh, and fi finally, job stressors. Uh, I look at interpersonal conflict and I have a, a little stream of research on, on work overload. Uh, and I, I'm going to briefly describe what, one of those studies, uh, giving it a positive spin that uh, how, how can we prevent uh, workload and job stresses from decreasing people, people's well-being. So to, to get into the, the specific study, uh, the purpose here was, was to examine uh, actual work events and integrate effective events theory with, with this uh, work on uh, work, work family and on capitalization on positive events. Now, effective events theory, for, for, for those of you who uh, are not familiar with, uh, which is by uh, Weiss and Cropanzano, uh, they, they propose that uh, many events that happen at work are effective, emotional in character. So uh, they, these events influence people's momentary feelings 
and affect and these feelings, so that's why they are affective events, uh, and, and, and these affective states further drive some behaviors, like citizenship behaviors. When you are in a positive mood, you're more likely to help someone. Uh, and they proposed, I think this is one of the, the few, few theories in OB that proposes that time is an important uh, component uh, to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to behavior at work. So in, in, in their uh, theory, events influence affective states and, and, and these affective states influence what they call affect-driven behaviors, uh, which are more the voluntary behaviors than the typical performance. And, in, uh, and also then uh, these affective states experience every day at work in, in the long term they influence job satisfaction. That's in affective events theory. Uh, then in, in it, there is some research that, that shows that people, uh, people share positive events with others. Uh, I, I talked about affective events theory and I, I've seen a lot of, um, quite, a, quite a bit of research on it. It's very rare that one sees uh, research that actually measures, captures events and affect. Uh, sometimes people capture affect and they link it to something, to behavior, to satisfaction. They assume that their affect was influenced by, 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 by some events. In this study, we want to, to test the whole, uh, the, the whole mediated chain from affect, from uh, events to affect and then to state job satisfaction. This is, an, this is an extension to AET looking at state job satisfaction. As I mentioned, in, in, the, in the original theory, satisfaction is conceptualized as a, a long-term long evaluation. So the, ge the general expectations here in, in this study uh, is that positive events at work influence daily job satisfaction through the experience of, of, of positive affect. Uh, furthermore, if one discusses positive events with one's spouse at home, uh, the prediction is that this, this behavioral action will increase job satisfaction uh, over and above the effects of the positive event itself. Uh, and finally, uh, inspired by, by the work of, of Gable and others, we also looked at the nature of spouses' responses to this sharing. And the, the idea here is that if, if, if spouses are responsive in an active, constructive way, uh, then this sharing is not only going to influence job satisfaction, but also relationship satisfaction. And there is research with, uh, for, for, for example, I believe it's uh, in Gable et al., 2006, they had uh, dating couples, and they had them in, in the lab share positive events, and uh, then me measured responsiveness to, to those events. And they found out that when the, response, when the partner's responsiveness was higher, uh, the relationship satisfaction was higher. Now, with respect to job satisfaction, what, what, what would be some of the, the mechanisms that, uh, like the, the, the psychological mechanisms that uh, suggest that capitalization has an effect on, on satisfaction. Well, first, when, when we discuss some events, some experience with, with, with someone, that brings it back into, in, into our working memory. It, it makes it more salient, and it brings the work role back in our memory at home. So then if, if, if I ask someone at that moment, how do you like your job, this becomes a, a more, more salient influence on, on their evaluation. So through this accessibility in the memory, uh, I, 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 I believe uh, such an effect should be expected. Uh, second, this uh, deals with, uh, a second explanation relates to the concept of uh, social verification. So this is a subjective experience. Once I share it with others, it almost becomes objective reality. Uh, it, it, it acquires like a new status. So then it, 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 more, it has a, more strong, a stronger influence of how I feel about my job, which generated this, uh, this uh, 
event, this positive event. So to summarize, uh, this is this is what, uh, what 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 the study, what the, what the study's hypotheses are, uh, and as I, as I, as I uh, describe in a moment, this was a study that that is uh, happened over three weeks. People have daily reports. It, it also in, involves spouses. Uh, so this this portion here tests this uh, extension of effective events theory by looking at how positive work events influence job satisfaction through positive effort. Uh, this, perhaps the more, more interesting part is the, the link between work family interpersonal capitalization and job satisfaction. And we expect this effect over and above what the event's pleasantness has on, on job satisfaction. Uh, and then we also have like a, like a checklist of, of other positive events to, to control for. Uh, and this, uh, finally, this is the, the moderated effect uh, that ba based on the, uh, on the, on the studies on uh, couples and on sharing, sharing uh, positive events in the lab, we, we expected. Okay, so about, about the, uh, the, the design, we had, as I said, daily, uh, daily surveys for, for three weeks only for the days of the uh, working days. So the employees, those are full-time full employees, uh, and I, I have some, some details here. Uh, we, we recruited participants from uh, small nonprofit organizations in, in the Lansing area uh, that have an association, and the director of the association uh, helped us with this email, everybody encouraging them to participate. We pay them as well for, for, for this effort. Uh, I, I think this was a good sample for this particular topic uh, because they, they, the, they reported events that were uh, uh, very meaningful. So I, I have some examples here. They, they reported like ribbon cutting for a new bus shelter built for clients, receiving good news regarding a foster child's medical condition, receiving a sizable donation. So they were all nonprofits working on uh, I, uh, interesting, I, I would say, positive work. And so they had this end of work day survey online. We did this over the, over the internet. They had a text box where they were asked to describe what was the most positive event that you have experienced today at work. Uh, and then they had to rate they had some, some little scales, uh, rating this positive, the most positive work event on uh, some, some characteristics, including pleasantness, which we, we, we will control for. Uh, then they had a checklist with other positive work events that we developed in a, in a pilot study. Uh, and they reported their, po their state positive aspect. How do you feel right now using the uh, Watson intelligence panels? Then the interpersonal capitalization of positive events. Pre previous research shows that uh, people tend to discuss the majority of their positive experiences. So uh, 70 to 80 percent is, the, is the, the, the number that we got. And as, as, as you know, uh, the, if we have such an unbalanced uh, distribution, uh, it, it's, it's harder to capture an effect. You need, you need to, to increase power. At an extreme, if they capital, capitalize on all of them, you can't find any effect. Uh, so to, to balance this, uh, whether they discuss or not with others, we had randomized instructions at the end of the, the end of work they survey that told them tonight at home either capitalize, discuss with your spouse this event, or don't discuss it. So, and in the end it turned out that this, this they, they, they didn't always follow those uh, instructions. Like, in, in, I think 20 to 25 percent of the cases they didn't follow them. Uh, and nevertheless, this instruction uh, correlated with the actual report of what they did, like uh, 0.48. So uh, I think a decent validity. And we also, we also told them that uh, if you have to share, share. Just tell us the truth at the end. Uh, have you done it or not? Uh, so that happened at the, on, the, on the home survey, which was on 
uh, on, we, we, we gave them palm pilots for the home survey that beeped every day, I believe, at 8 p.m. And on, on these palm pilots, they, they were asked th th that question. Uh, regarding the most positive events that we reported earlier that happened to you at day, uh, have you discussed it with your spouse or not? And this was our capitalization uh, variable. And we also asked them to, to evaluate their job. So how satisfied are you with, with your job? Uh, finally, we, we involved the spouses. And I, I forgot to mention we had the final sample uh, consisted of 52 uh, full-time employees and 37 of, the, of their spouses. So this went on for three weeks. Each week we had five reports of uh, the most positive work events, or you know, four maybe if, you, if one day was missing. So at the end of each week, we, 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 we pulled this data from the, from, from the database and we printed surveys with an event description that we mailed to the spouses and asked them how they responded to each of those events. So we did three mailings to the spouses. And uh, we collected their responsiveness ratings. Uh, it turns out that this uh, had, had uh, pretty high ICC values, so that justified uh, aggregation. So the spouse responsiveness is at the, at the person level, at the, at the level two of the analysis, as I'll show uh, in, in a minute. I'm kind of going fast here. If you have any questions, feel, feel free to stop me. Or, uh, should I keep going? I have a question about the Yes, and, 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 and we paid them a small amount. And it, as a condition for participating in the study, we, we asked them that uh, to be eligible, you, you must be married or, 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 or live with a significant other who is also uh, likely that they, they're going to uh, participate in, in this research. And uh, I, I have done some of, this, some of these studies before uh, in, involving spouses. So, some of them... Uh, I, I even may have, may have the slide where the, the survey people call spouses every night for, for 10 days. It's harder to get participants to come with, the, with, with their spouses, and you obviously limit the, the, the sampling frame, but it, it, it's possible. Yes? Capitalization, uh, it's means just sharing this event. Did you discuss this positive experience that you had at work with your spouse at home? So it's a zero-one variable. You, you either talk about it at home or you don't. So why do you use the term capitalization? Uh, assuming that it works in, uh, in, in increasing job satisfaction based on the previous theory that tells that uh, this indeed, you can capitalize on it you get an additional effect uh, on uh, your affect or, 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 or job satisfaction in my research. Yeah, so uh, it turns out that it works for job satisfaction, but uh, you are right. If it wouldn't, then capitalization would, 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 would not be appropriate. Isn't that also the term that yes, 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 yes. We, we, we didn't invent this term. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, a, it, it's a term that... Uh, Gable uses and so for, for the analysis because this, this data are, are nested uh, within people and also for each person we, we, we could have up to 15 responses uh, we, we use hierarchical linear modeling with days at level 1 and uh, pe people at, at level 2 so in essence how, how, how this is done is uh, you stack the data, and for, for each subject you have 15 observations. And uh, the, the predictors in, in, in the regressions were centered at the individual means. So basically what we had there were deviations from each person's mean. Uh, and, and this technique basically eliminates all the between individual differences in those scores, uh, which means that the, uh, the, the estimates that we get are 
reflect strictly within individual uh, pro processes. Uh, at, at, for the uh, cross-level prediction with responsiveness, uh, I, I first test whether there is variance in the, in, in the level one regression, co regression coefficients. So basically, you, you, uh, I, I estimate the regression for each person to their 15 data points. So in this regression, I, I see whether, this, uh, whether capitalization influences uh, relationship satisfaction, and I, I get a beta. I get a beta for each person. At level two, I, 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 I attempt to predict the magnitude of those betas with the level two variable in, in essence. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go through all this, obviously. Uh, what, what is uh, perhaps noteworthy is that uh, here the, uh, the partner responsiveness did, did correlate significantly with the relationship satisfaction at the between individual level, which is what, what, what one would expect and, and, and based on uh, Gable studies. Uh, all, all the other correlations are, are, are pretty much what, uh, what one would expect for uh, the actual capitalization did predict, in, in a uh, regression sense, job satisfaction at the end of the day. It did not predict positive affect, which with this design, it, it makes perfect sense because affect was measured earlier in the day, so this could not have had an effect on it. Uh, to to the, uh, the, the, the hypothesis test, uh, so we had, I had those two variables, the pleasantness of the, of the most positive event and the number of other positive events. Uh, they, they both predicted positive affect at work, uh, which was the prediction from effective events theory. Then next, I, I looked at the mediation. Uh, it, it turned out that the number of other positive events did not have an overall effect on job satisfaction, but it had an indirect effect. Uh, on job satisfaction through positive affect. Uh, and finally, the, uh, what, what I think is a more, more interesting finding is that we, we did find this uh, effect of work-family uh, capitalization on, on job satisfaction, even controlling for uh, the pleasantness of the event and the number of uh, other positive events. With respect to predicting relationship satisfaction, uh, we found that within people, job satisfaction predicted, uh, responsiveness predicted, but the cross-level interaction did not work. Uh, I, w w one explanation is that uh, the, the power was, was much lower there. Uh, this is a between individual uh, effect, and also the, the level one coefficients have somewhat low reliability. They're not like regular scores. So perhaps power is an issue uh, for the, when, when we use the, uh, the, spouse, the spouse's scores. So to summarize, you see here in green the, the, the links that worked. Uh, and this, uh, we didn't really predict the main effect here, unless it's, un, uh, I, I assume it's only going to happen as a moderated effect. But this didn't work. Uh, there was a positive effect here, which uh, was not predicted, but uh, it, 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 it makes sense. So uh, this is all I have for, for this study. I, I, ha I have more, uh, I have some, some, some different things that, that I'd like to, uh, to present. But do you have any, any questions about this study or, or, or any clarifications or ideas? Yes. Now, the, the, uh, I, I think the, the most variables that, that I had were three variables in, uh, in, in, in the level one regressions. Uh, it, it, and I, I did not run those regressions independently. The software kind of pulls the whole, the whole data file. Uh, and I, I, I have seen HRM analysis with five data points. And, uh, but if 
provided you have enough enough subjects. So uh, overall, you have you have a large large number of observations. Uh, No, in, in, in the within individual analysis, the power is quite high because we have like 50 people roughly times 15 observations. Uh, that, uh, but then to estimate the individual uh, the, the individual parameters, the power is low, uh, as, as you suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Like from from the family to, to the work. Mm. Yeah, I, I I actually didn't. Uh, I, I I think that that is a good idea. I, I do have a a couple of studies where I in acted I asked spouses to report on the employees' behaviors at home. Uh, like social behaviors, positive so social behaviors, uh, but no, I never looked at how the spouse, what what the spouses do, can positively influence work. And I I I would think that there are some effects of that of that nature. Perhaps that. Uh, when we look at work events, yes, and, and, and the spots. There have been other studies that looked at other uh, life events and how one uh, talks with, a, with, a, with their spouse about them, whether that influences, for example, life satisfaction. Uh, but I'm not aware of any study that looked at work events and job satisfaction. Yes. Yes, in, 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 in this data, that's, that, that's what it says. And uh, that is not what I expected, obviously. Uh, so, uh, so I don't have to share any name with her and what they, doesn't matter one way or the other. Either well, you know, uh, <laughs> as you know, that, 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 that a study didn't support it, it, it doesn't mean that it, it's not there. I, I believe there is an effect there, and perhaps there is a better way to capture it. Perhaps had I had uh, 100 spouses, instead of 37 spouses, I, I, I would have uh, captured that effect. Now, in the end, I don't know. So it may not have a positive effect on my relationship, but it will have a positive effect on my job satisfaction when I've shared that. Yes. Oh, you, you, you mean whether the spouse is responsive? Well, for the job satisfaction, I propose a main effect, which I did not propose for relationship satisfaction. So I think each time you share a positive work event with your spouse, it's going to increase your job satisfaction regardless of the responsiveness. It just becomes, you become more aware of it, it's more salient to you, and it influences your evaluation. Uh, when, when, when I talk about relationship satisfaction, because this event was not generated by that work, by that life role, uh, it, it should not have a main effect. Only a moderate effect. That, that's 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 my, my, my rationale in this paper. I might have missed this, but uh, early on you had reference to me about personality. Was there, was there anything in the study that isolated personality as a variable? Because I think about the vast majority of friends that I have, and I know that their 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 sense of personal identity will definitely impact how they interpret what is aspect you know positive or not. At work. Right. So is there any controls or anything you can speak to on that? 
for, for the within individual effects, the, I, 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 don't, I, I do not have controls for personality, and I, I, and I do not think that they would make a difference because the, the, those represent deviations uh, for, for, for each person. Now, for the, it could have a moderating effect on, on these links and perhaps to, with a responsiveness, but I did not control for that, no. Yes? Right. So it's a sort of a trait. Mm -hmm. So if I'm fact, in fact satisfied on my job, does that predict affect? That in turn predicts I'm going to have more positive interactions or more events will occur that will be positive, and I'll just create a more positive environment. Does the, do the arrows go that way? Mm -hmm. I, 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 be, I believe they would. Uh, your, your general satisfaction cannot predict those day-to-day -day fluctuations, but they can predict the average level of uh, positive events. And let me see if I, I think I, there, there was something that uh, suggests that you're right in, in the correlations, in the between individual correlations, uh, but I, I forget. And there was like a small uh, between individual uh, correlation between job satisfaction, which is, you know, the average. So that is similar to your global job satisfaction and, and, and the positive event, the pleasantness. So that, that is very, very hard to interpret what caused what there. Uh, so, but I, I, I think you're right. Uh, pe people tend to perhaps not only report more positive experience, but experience them as more positively, given that they have a, a, a more positive disposition. And with, with respect to the, to the within individual links here, uh, I, I, take, I, I take care in, in, in designing these studies to uh, measure things at the appropriate times during a day to have this temporal precedence. Uh, so I think that's... Uh, should be a little bit assured. Now, of course, it's not the whole, uh, I, I cannot claim causality, but I think I'm, I'm getting a little bit closer than comparing to studies where they ask all the ratings to be done at the same point in the same survey and then claim one, one direction or, or another for, for causality. Yes? Mm -hmm. And that's what's reinforcing it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because it makes it more available to you, more salient, and, and it has been generated in your work role. So then when I ask you about, about your job satisfaction, you, you, you're likely to rate it higher. Should I move on to other stuff? Or? Well, One more question. Uh -huh. It's like an intervention. That's a very good idea. Well, look, we can look at how, this co how the day of the study correlates with job satisfaction. Yeah, so you can have some people that you're not prompting and asking them to report, and those who are, and then see what happens, the difference. And how they, uh, uh, they <laughs> that, that, that's a very good comment. It, it, it turns out that I, uh, that, that I have a student who, that, who that did her thesis on, on, on something similar, just writing about something positive that, that, that happened to you, and 
the event was whether uh, prospective students were admitted at Michigan State or not. We, we got the, the records and then they received a letter. Uh, and, and along the lines that uh, you, you suggest, perhaps now she should look at whether they accepted our offer or not. Maybe this, because we do have two random groups. Uh, maybe those who we ask to recall this, they're more likely to accept. That, that would be interesting and I, I believe meaningful. Probably the admissions office would love us. <laughs> we're not going to do any, any study again. We're gonna, just going to tell to all of them. <laughs> okay, let, let, let me talk about some uh, other uh, things that I'm doing. So I, I mentioned that job satisfaction is a big focus of mine in this uh, stream of research of uh, daily employee well-being. I, I look at other things as well. Uh, I look at some of the, the, the negative things, burnout and strain. Uh, are of course, the, the focus of, of work psychology uh, in studying burnout and strain is to reduce it. Uh, Work-family balance, I, I, I have quite, quite a few, quite, quite some work lately on, on work-family balance. Uh, positive family behaviors, I, I mentioned that I had this study where I asked spouses were called every night and they, we had a, a, a list of social interactions, social behaviors with the family, like going out and having dinner and having a conversation. Uh, that spouses reported for, for 10 days, and that was predicted by the employee's positive affect, uh, which was in, in itself predicted by uh, affect at work in, through, a, through a spillover mechanism. Uh, capacity to, to recover, like Sabine Zahn and Tag's research, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to incorporate that in, 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 into my, my research. Uh, sleep quality, I just finished a, a study where I'm looking at job demands and how, how they influence people's uh, family lives and then their sleep quality. We bought these little sleep watches, the, I forgot what they're called. They track movements, they, they measure many times a minute how, how one moves and they, they can uh, have a, uh, an objective index of, of sleep quality. So the, the idea here is to identify some recovery strategies that one can employ so then they, they're not strained at home and they have a good, good, good quality sleep. Uh, life satisfaction, of, of course, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a very important uh, employee well-being and it has been studied at, at, at the daily level. Uh, I, I have this study that, that, that came out in AMJ, I think a month ago or so, where we looked at the, the spillover of job satisfaction onto life satisfaction and affect at home. Uh, and the focus was on, I'm not sure if you can read, this is work family integration. There is a, uh, it, uh, there is a theory of, 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 of role, role integration that specifies that there are between individual differences in the extent to which one integrates versus segments one's work and family roles. And if you're an integrator, then you're going to experience more spillover, which is indeed uh, what we find here. We find this, uh, significant uh, interactions. And this, this is a, a new paper that it's uh, under review uh, for the third time, I, I believe. Uh, well, no, it's for the fourth time. The first time was rejected. But, uh, <laughs> then it kept... Uh, so here we look at workload and uh, how, how can we decrease the, the negative effects of workload through job control, that's a classic demands control model, and perceived organizational support. Uh, and, I, and I had in some, in some previous work proposed that this uh, strain at work, uh, it, it, it manifests through uh, end of day well-being, which, which is I typically assess at home through this affective strain pathway. So I think affect, like negative affect, has, has a big impact. Uh, so in this paper, we also look at blood pressure uh, and to have an objective indicator and a measure of affective distress. Uh, again, again, this was a, one of the, the, the diary studies where, okay, I have this here, where we, uh, we surveyed people three times each day at work. They, they were asked to, to report uh, the, how, how, how they feel their affect 
and their workload, and also they have those little blood pressure cuffs that they press the button each time. And then we also measure the same things at the end of the work day. And then the, the low well-being was, was, was measured at home. This went on for uh, 10 days. And I'm not going to go in, in, in more detail with this. Uh, I, I, I can send, send the paper to, to those who are interested. But uh, here what, what, what this shows is that if people perceive that they have uh, high organizational support, uh, whether they, they have higher workload or lower workload has very little influence on, on, on their blood pressure. And we obtain the same effect with this uh, subjective report of uh, affective distress. Uh, yes? Like the social interaction and the capitalization, you're right. It wouldn't apply to if, um, let alone if you're single uh, and you live alone. It's, uh, it's impossible to uh, share this with, with, with someone at home. Uh, so it, it, it doesn't apply to everyone. I'm not sure I, I have a, I have a target population for this. Well, what I'm trying to do is understand how this psychological process works, and if, if I understand that, uh, then perhaps one could target some. Uh, work, some type of worker, or some, some, some population, for example, office workers. We, we studied office workers, and uh, office workers in, in, in a different study that I didn't address here, uh, it, it, made a, it made a difference for them. For workers, yes, perhaps there's more of an opportunity, so in, in that respect, uh, we helped our research. Uh, we helped our likelihood to, uh, to, to, to get findings, but I, I think that that's a good point, and I, I don't have a straight answer. I, I'm not targeting uh, this to a, to, to a, to a program. Uh, this is at the initial stage just to understand how those, those things work for me. When we were looking at uh, uh, high organizational support, so if I'm understanding you, I believe the organization is supportive of me. Mm -hmm. My blood pressure stayed the same, whether I had a little uh, a workload or a big right. workload. Mm -hmm. How was uh, organizational support defined? I mean, it's the, it's the, the Eisenberg around that, that uh, perceived organizational support, whether you have resources to deal with your work, whether you have emotional support. and, and uh, So it, 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 it's perceived organizational support, but it should be related to some resources that you have that are provided to you at work to deal with the uh, with the tasks that you that, that you must that you must work on. So I'm just defining my employer as being uh, uh, supportive. I have the resources I need to do my. Uh, right. I'm not sure it's it's it's. Uh, I think I think that may, maybe that's what you're, you're getting to. I think the organizational word there it's a little bit misleading. I don't think this is an organizational variable. Uh, I think some some people can have more or less support. Uh, in the same organization. Mm -hmm. So it includes social support. That there have been studies on the, that extended the job demands control model to the job demands control support model. And, and uh, our purpose here was to, to have something more inclusive than just supervisor support, for example. So that's, that's why the, uh, the organi perceived organizational support uh, was included here. Yeah. In the earlier chart that you showed with the red line um, where, where it reveals that there wasn't a 
impact that relationship mm -hmm. sharing positive uh, events at work. Do, would you predict that you would find the opposite through effective distress if that individual is sharing negative events from work? That it would actually the that's an interesting. That, that, that's an interesting. Uh, that, that's an interesting question. Uh, yeah, I, I think it would. Hurt. I, I'm just thinking about it right now. I didn't think about it before. I, I think it would hurt. I think it would hurt the relationship, and perhaps uh, here I measure it. I measure the employee's relationship satisfaction. I did not men, uh, measure the spouses. I don't think the spouses are going to be uh, very welcoming if you extensively share only the negative events. Now, you know, to some extent, uh, I, I think there's a balance. You can share some, and, you know, you have a supportive spouse you, that's going to increase your rela relationship satisfaction, but perhaps uh, above a certain threshold, uh, it, it, would, it would go the other way and decrease it. But uh, I, I, I'm just thinking aloud here. Okay, this this is a, this is another an, another study that uh, we're, it's not even a study yet. I, I, uh, I, we we I, we have some uh, some paper that I I I I, uh, I, I plan to, to to write with with, with Tim that uh, it, it's from 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 a bigger data set that I I already used for 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 publication, but I never looked at this emotional support that the spouses. Uh, Reported. So the idea here is that uh, spouses report on whether the employees provided emotional support to them. And uh, again, we find that the positive affect ha has a, uh, that comes from work to, through home affect has, has an effect on, on whether you provide emotional support or not over and above the uh, negative effects of working those long hours. Uh, so, which, which is not, perhaps, you know, that, that is not very surprising. The more you work, the more, the less time you have to, to provide support. And, uh, and, and that predicts spouses' marital satisfaction at the between people uh, level. Now, you know, th th this arrow here, it, it could be either way. That, that, that is just a between individual association there. So some of the, the, the contributions of this, uh, of, of this little research stream that I have that, that, I, that I think and I hope to, to make to the literature is that, you know, show them what happens day to day at work and how people experience those things, how they evaluate their, their work, their matters for, for, for their well-being and, and influences uh, work behavior. I, I, I didn't show the, the, the part of work behavior here. I have uh, a couple of studies on citizenship behavior and uh, I find support for uh, an, within individual link. Uh, I'm, I, I believe with, with Tim and others, we, we extended uh, effective events theory to look at fluctuations in job satisfaction, which were not specified in the original theory. And now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take this across the, uh, the work-family boundary, so to extend it to, uh, to, to study its implications for work, for, for, for employees' family lives. Uh, this work-family interpersonal capitalization, uh, it's, it could be seen as, a, uh, as an enrichment strategy. Uh, we know about work-family conflict versus work-family enrichment. And I think it has been proposed in the past that uh, discussing work at home can be a form of, in, of enrichment. But it has never been formally integrated in, in, in theories of work-family en enrichment or, or studied for that matter. So I, I, I hope uh, I, I can move in, in that direction to consider this as a form, uh, as, as a form of uh, en enrichment. Some, some ideas for, for future research. Uh, perhaps this is related to, 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 to uh, Jane's comment earlier. Uh, I would like to see uh, next day effects to work behavior uh, or how people feel at work, uh, how they deal with their coworkers at work following an evening where uh, they did discuss something positive with, with, with their spouse or they did have positive interactions. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there is much on that in, uh, research in, 
in, in that area, at least I haven't seen it. Um, I, I, I'm planning a study on how employees' appraisal of their own behaviors influences their, their decisions. So, for, for example, I, I can ask uh, people if they, if they engage in counterproductive work behaviors and then give, them some, give to half of them some feedback that these uh, behaviors are undesirable and perhaps by, uh, they, they will engage in these reparatory actions by performing OCBs uh, if, if they're made aware of the, of the meaning of, of, of these acts. Uh, I, I talked a little bit about the work-family integration uh, re research. Uh, it would be interesting if one could differentially engage in work in integration segmentation strategy. So segment for a negative spillover uh, so it doesn't cross over into the family domain and let the positive uh, c come over. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how would that happen. Uh, perhaps don't check your email, but only talk about the positives, but uh, I, I, I didn't think about it yet. Uh, one, one idea that, that I had as I was writing this, uh, this slide is that, this, uh, that there's a literature on uh, stress recovery strategies. Uh, I wonder if this uh, discussing some positives at home not only increases uh, job satisfaction, so not only has this capitalization effect, but it also uh, reduces, it dampens the effects of uh, negative work events or, or job stressors. Uh, and, then, and then finally, on the related to, to, to my approach in, in, in some of this research at, uh, for looking at day-to-day uh, -day fluctuations in well-being, uh, at some point, I think this mechanism, once they're understood, uh, must be translated or connected back to the between individual differences uh, in, in chronic well-being. Uh, for, for example, the, uh, the research on the demand, demands and control. Uh, so what if you predict the day-to-day the -day fluctuations and if you can uh, prevent wide fluctuations by giving people support. Perhaps there is like a threshold effect. If you experience too much, then that will create uh, chronic differences. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think these issues are, are, are very well studied, so uh, I, I think, and I, and I think they should. I'm not sure if I have more slides, no? But we can talk more and uh, you can ask questions. Yes. Right. Well, I, I would think the you know the, the classic job characteristics uh, uh, that I mentioned would, would have an impact. Like the, the job control that I that I mentioned is, is uh, you know decisional attitude, based, basically. Uh, perhaps human resource pra practices, uh, which I, which I'm not very familiar with, but I, I have seen research on like high efficiency HR practices that uh, perhaps do predict. The ratio of positive to negative. Um, so where I'm coming from with the question is when I'm teaching the CMS stuff, um, either to undergraduates who are searching for firms to look for, to look for, and they're looking for kind of what would be indicators that, in fact, I'm going to join a firm where I'm going to, you know, I'm going to learn and perform well, but also I'm going to feel good. You know, mm -hmm.
organizations and sort of what's happening at the micro level mm -hmm. within your unit where you might have some control that could affect the rate at which you have these positive right. experiences. So one is about job choice. You know, what do I look to what do I look for as indicators that firms might be have more of these positive events. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, okay, I'm in a restricted context, so how can I think about um, doing things those are difficult questions. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I, I would think control and decision latitude, it, it, it would be a, a, an indicator for a, for a, for a specific job. It, it's, it's very hard to predict the, the ratio of positive to negative events. And if you could, you know, sample people on job satisfaction and life satisfaction, then that, that, that would probably be a better indicator. But I, I think control is a, is a very powerful uh, job characteristic. So not only that has a direct effect on positive events, I think, but I think people are likely to even interpret negative events less negatively if they have control. Uh, even if you have the unexercised control, uh, I, th I, th I think it, uh, it, it makes a difference. Uh, and I get some help. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, people typically care that they want to be more satisfied, uh, and I think their managers care because then they're more likely to stay and to perform OCBs and so on. But I, I think what, what, what your question relates to is that uh, it's not only this evaluative end state that matters in our lives, at work or, or, or in general. And I, I think this relates to, the, to that distinction that I had on the, on the, uh, on, on the first slide, uh, evaluative well-being. If somebody asks you, you know, how happy you are, versus experiential well-being. How do you live your life and how do you uh, experience things at work? Uh, are you engaged? Uh, uh, so I think that's a different aspect that it's related to this evaluative uh, well-being uh, as in subjective well-being or job satisfaction. Yet it's very different. Uh, perhaps the concept of flow is the, uh, is the closest that uh, we know at work in, uh, to this experiencing uh, well-being. Uh, I mentioned that I have this this study with a um, with a student that we measured flow as in Chikshan Mihaly's definition and in his conceptualization by asking people on PAL pilots at work uh, on the task that you were working when 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 this device beeped uh, do you, do you feel like you you are very skillful? And uh, is, it was very challenging. And then, following his his methodology, we 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 cross those two and high skill and high challenge. Uh, we we assume are the conditions for flow. Now we never ask people, are you in this flow state? Because that would get to make them evaluate it. And it it, it turns out that even that, uh, you know, what I hope psychologists would think is a deficient variable. Uh, predicts very well the uh, affect and, and vitality 
in, 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 in this study. Uh, now, you know, don't get me started. The, the study was rejected because we did not measure it with the scale. Uh, and <laughs> yes. evaluation of leaders mm -hmm. and so I was thinking about what speaking to your students and how do I tell is what are the leaders in that company evaluated on uh, and if I saw engagement on that list I mm -hmm. feel and that's a good idea I, more I, I, likely that they would be mm -hmm. looking after my positive right. experience at right. They at least care about your, your your engagement. I think Gallup tracks job engagement in in, in, in some of, some of their clients. Uh, yeah. Uh, Boyatzis was here 2004, I think, and he was talking about his uh, study on power stress, which I think speaks mm -hmm. quite a bit to that last bullet point, uh, more so to the chronic ill-being than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm, I'm thinking of the correlations between job control uh, and how that relates with whether or not that gives that particular employee the ability to work more within their strengths, which then avoids that chronic ill being. Mm -hmm. The that, stress which you talked about. Right. That that that, that is a, the theory behind the, you know the job control, the job demand and, con and control model. Now, at some point, there have there has to be some limit that if you have to work like a hundred hour weeks, uh, even if you choose those hundred hours, uh, they're going to be stressful. Um, that, that's what I think. Are we done? We'd like to thank you for coming down for okay. <laughs> and sharing food for thoughts. So and we can each go back to our home organization and talk, think about ways to capitalize and create job satisfaction. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. And before you leave, also we have a quick announcement. Oh, yeah, I have, I have an announcement. I just want to let you know. Um, we're going to have to leave this summer. Um, and uh, we're going to try to have uh, five workshops on Saturday.